there's a lot of thunderstorm activity on that satellite picture, especially in the Rockies, the Gulf Coast, and the northeastern U.S. Let's take a look at that surface map. The Rockies covered with thunderstorm activity this afternoon, all the way from the Mogollon Rim through Grand Junction and up to Yellowstone Park. Out to the east, multiple lines of thunderstorms, and that definitely indicates the presence of boundaries that have stagnated. Even though I don't have one drawn here, there's a good potential for an old boundary to be in that area. We get these polar outbreaks in August and early September. They tend to slow down and stagnate in the southeastern U.S., the eastern U.S., and of course the Gulf Coast region. And it's pretty much obvious from the orientation of these thunderstorm areas that these east-west boundaries are responsible. Temperatures in the upper 80s and 90s just about everywhere east of the Rockies except the Great Lakes where we have some 70s with a fresh outbreak of cold air. And of course this boundary here is probably going to stagnate once again and produce more thunderstorm activity as the weekend goes on. The monsoon pattern is in effect out there in the western U.S. The strong heating, the increase in the prevailing westerlies up north, all of that helps to bring moisture northward from Mexico. And it infiltrates the Intermountain region, the Rockies, the Great Basin area, and you can see the dew points are in the 30s and 40s. And really, that's about all that it takes to get storms forming. In the Four Corners area, dew points are in the 60s. 60s throughout much of Arizona, into the deserts, little 67 hiding there at Yuma, and 67 in the Big Bend area, so we can connect that with a 60 degree isodrosotherm. That goes a little bit further north there. And there you go, that paints out the extent of the monsoon moisture. Of course, it extends further up north, but this is the core of that monsoon air infiltrating northward. A little bit of haze from wildfires along the California-Oregon border. Clear skies, strong heating, and temperatures up near 100 helping to produce that fire risk. And going further north, some cool air coming into the Pacific Northwest, down to 67 at Seattle much cooler than what we had last week, and Alaska and Yukon continue to be cool at this hour. More cool air found in the eastern Hudson Bay region, out into Hudson Bay itself, and temperatures there in the 30s and 40s. And that's helping to produce some of the cold air that's moving through the Great Lakes area and the northeastern U.S. A new frontal system moving through the northeastern U.S., the warm, moist sector extending as far north as Albany and Connecticut and Massachusetts that's helping to produce this strong thunderstorm activity out around Boston. The radar at the time we record this showing most of the convection moving offshore. Boston located about right here, so yeah, things are clearing up, leading us into a nice Friday evening. Down in Rhode Island in eastern Connecticut, there are still some problems, some strong thunderstorms out around Norwich, and uh, if we interrogate these cells, they do look multicellular at this time. You can see the higher reflectivity concentrated in the center of the echo, so typically when we see severe weather, those cores will be very close to the inflow region. The inflow, of course, coming up from the south, feeding these storms. And when you have the reds and whites and purples way down here, that tells us that the storm is probably becoming severe. So that doesn't rule out the risk of severe weather. Could still get hail, winds, that kind of thing. But doesn't look like a mesocyclone or any high-grade severe weather activity. The velocity... We zoom in really close to look at the rotation fields and not seeing any couplets here. So I don't think we're having any problems with these cells. The echo tops are still quite high up near 44,000. So they could put out some wind, very heavy rain, lightning and small hail. Probability of severe hail creeping up into the low end 
category maximum estimated hail size one inch okay so yeah we could get a little bit of hail from these storms we'll see how long those hold together and as we record this the cells tracking into southern rhode island and those should be gone in a couple of hours probably shortly after this is posted let's take a look at that satellite image two different systems one is this outgoing mcs developing an mcv structure mesoscale convective vortex that's over southeastern north dakota and northeastern south dakota of course the rocky mountain monsoon there everywhere across the northwestern and central rockies big rig steve haven't heard from him in a while but he is located out around green river utah kind of in this clear area let's check out what he is seeing well he's parked there on the entrance ramp that's definitely heading east he's getting some food as we record this but How about some big newtons <laughs> Well, he's got quite the spread here, but looking out to the east, you can see the high-based towering cumulus there forming up into CBs. There's another anvil out in the distance. Well, we can zoom in a little bit and toss the interstates on there as an overlay. And plenty of storms over the higher terrain. Looks like it's not too much activity over the interstate itself. But certainly a picturesque view there he is. He's back on the road. I gave him a few minutes to get going. And there you have it. The view from eastern Utah. And looking elsewhere around the country. Let me get rid of those interstates. Kind of clutters up the map. We have backed off from thunderstorms on the higher terrain of California. So I guess that's not good news for Ron Ronchal Font and our viewers, our other viewers out there. Also, the deserts of Arizona and California looking pretty dry this afternoon. But as you go east into the higher terrain, as we mentioned, all the way out towards El Paso and the mountains, Davis Mountains of West Texas, all of that getting thunderstorm activity. There's the South Central U.S. this afternoon. Kind of unusual to see these aerial patches of thunderstorms. We have not seen anything like that this summer, but now that we're into late summer, we're getting those boundaries coming south, the sea breeze moving north. There's been a lot of ingredients to help get these storms going, and also the lack of capping is definitely contributing. Now, where they are getting some capping is up there in Oklahoma. Obviously, they're there's going to be some sort of upper level ridge across that area. Just not much going on around Oklahoma City. Temperatures up there in the mid levels, a little bit too warm. And there it is, the 700 millibar chart showing an upper level high across eastern Kansas, covering much of the central U.S. and thermal ridging coming into the central plains. So that is located here. The tail end of that front is managing to squeak out a few thunderstorms, but it is slim pickings. The southeastern U.S., the usual linear boundary, sea breeze, any kind of boundary type setup, especially in Florida, numerous cells going up, especially along the east coast. Vero Beach up towards Orlando, getting showers this evening. There's the Northeast getting their batches of thunderstorm activity. And of course, with that cold front out here, I guess we're not totally done with the storms. Although I would expect some of it to begin winding down later this evening. And clear skies following in the wake, or I should say fair skies. They are clear up there in northern Michigan. And let's check out the north central U.S. There's that mesoscale convective vortex. Let's dial this back and look at the infrared. So what we're going to look at is Wyoming yesterday. This is yesterday evening, looking at infrared. And we're going to watch this area from Cheyenne to Chugwater to Douglas. Some cells going up just before dark. Those move into the Black Hills region and the Badlands, Rapid City. Very cold tops before midnight. Another round of convection 
overnight into the pre-dawn hours. And with that cloud dumping a whole lot of warm air in the upper levels, we get some low-level and mid-level pressure falls. A little circulation gets going, and you can see it taking root right there. This is going to be about maybe 7 or 8 this morning. And there's the remains heading up into North Dakota, and we're left with that right there. A little bit of activity around Fargo, but just not much left of that cluster. And that leads us to the temperature records, one of my favorite segments. For this afternoon, Miami coming close to the record at 93, but that's not going to break the record. Nothing for tomorrow, so everybody is near their seasonal normals. Sunday, same thing. Monday. Oh, okay, Tuesday, some records starting to show up in the northwest. 95 at around Portland, 96 at Burns, and 87 at Seattle. Wish they could bottle up some of that cold air that they have right now. For Wednesday, the heat spreads into the desert areas. Only 86 at Seattle, but temperatures coming up there near 90, or near 100, from Burns up to Missoula. More of the same for Thursday, and this far out, I would expect more records to pop up as we get later into next week. So I think we're looking at a at least a, a minor heat wave event in the northwestern states next week. So let's zip through our precipitable water very quickly. This is a very important chart for August and September. You see not only the moisture, but the air masses as well. For example, if I run this up towards uh, next week, look right up here. That's cold air, cold, dry air filtering into the northeastern U.S. And, of course, down to the south, the converse, warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf. So with that in mind, uh, watch the monsoon as well. And let's go through the sequence. Abundant moisture along the Gulf Coast, up to 2-inch precipitable water. Again, that's not the precept that's going to happen, that's the potential for precept if you were to squeeze out the entire column. Generally, the higher amounts over one and a half to two inches gets you into the tropical thunderstorms and showers type category where they go up anywhere there's a boundary. So you can see the main bulk of moisture coming up early next week. A piece breaks off, gets tangled up with this bear clinic system that's coming out of the Dakotas. And we let, allow that to roll forward. You can see that cold front sweeping through the Great Lakes on Tuesday and into the northeast. A lot of that cold air ends up in the northeast, not so much into the southeast U.S. But that's it. That's a front. And, of course, that means we're dumping another boundary. So these systems, as they move eastward, they're like, here's a boundary. Here, how about another boundary? Want another boundary? And they keep piling up, and that gives us a lot of development areas for convection. So it looks like a rainy one to two weeks coming up here. And we get up towards uh, one week from now. GFS tries to throw a hurricane into the Gulf. Now, again, that's way too far out to worry about. And in fact, it looks like the model has trended towards less recurvature. So now it's bringing these hurricanes into Mexico. That doesn't rule out the potential here in the U.S., but it's kind of a trend that we're seeing bringing the storms not so far north just yet. And I just saw a hint of another storm way out here recurving strongly. So nothing imminent for the U.S., but as I mentioned last week or back on Wednesday, it's a good time to take your precautions and get what you need if you live down on the coast so you don't you know so you're all set in case one of these things comes on shore like this one here off North Carolina but you know that's 360 hours out don't worry about that anyway so yeah the monsoon let's check that out the southwestern US still going Weakens a little bit, and that could be due to an increase in the prevailing westerlies during the middle of the week. And it stays mostly south of the border, 
picks up a little bit. So maybe some outside chances for showers next week. But I think we're seeing a little bit of a ramp down in the monsoon. We'll see. A quick look at the QPFs here shows the tropical activity down to the south and the bear clinic systems up to the north associated with the prevailing westerlies. Some of the higher amounts out around Iowa Saturday and Sunday. That's certainly frontal in nature. And eventually those boundaries get pushed down into the southeastern U.S. And you can see the precip totals coming up a little bit in that area. Overall, here's how the one through seven day precip looks. You can check out your area. Looks like a decline in precip there in the monsoon region of the southern Rockies. And as mentioned, nothing in the short term as far as hurricane potential. There's the obligatory NHC charts, the five-day tropical outlook looking like this. So it looks like maybe some potential out around Cancun and Belize. If you're taking a trip down there, you should definitely watch the weather. And of course, a second system coming off Cape Verde that could have some influence on the weather in about a week to two weeks from now. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our newest Patreon supporters once again, Anna, Chris, Benny, Mark, and Michael. Thank you very much for your support. And Brian Haggerty, he says that you have done some really great stuff. If Fred Reamer is teaching, he should make your videos required viewing. Brian also adds that he doesn't have a Google account. He uses his son's account, and we're a duo, he says. Graham and Brian Haggerty, and he loves your videos. Thank you very much, Brian. I'll go ahead and leave you with this footage from Big Rig Steve. We haven't really closed out a show this way, but I had it kind of pictured in my mind. So let's check out the view from Eastern Utah. Have a great Friday, have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Take care, bye-bye.